أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله على الصلاة والسلام على رسوله وصحبه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is Farah and today inshallah we will study the 25th chapter of the glorious Quran Surah Al-Furqan, the criterion. The name of the surah has been taken from the first verse, where there is a mention of Al-Furqan. Verse says, Tabarakal lazi nazzal al-Furqan ala abdihi. Blessed is he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, who sent down the criterion upon his servant. Surah Al-Furqan has 77 verses, and it is a Makki surah. Its revelation period is the same as that of Surah Al-Mu'minun. Surah starts by saying that Allah is blessed and it is his blessing that he sent down the Quran, the criterion to distinguish right from wrong. But people disbelieved in the oneness of Allah Azza wa Jal. They denied the Prophet of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and rejected the message of Quran. Second part of the Surah mentioned briefly about Prophet Musa and Nuh Salaman Alayhima. Then it mentioned the nations of Ad and Thamud. It talks about Allah's creation and his power. In the last section, there is a verse of prostration, verse 60, and then it talks about the characteristics of the faithful slaves of Allah and their du'as. So let's begin. Important points of Surah Al-Furqan Blessed is Allah who sent down the criterion. He subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of all good and he himself is blessed. He subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down the Quran to his slave that he may be a warner to the mankind and jinn. Allah is the one to whom belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth and he has not begotten a son. Yet disbelievers have taken the gods beside him, who created nothing but themselves are created ones. They possess no power of causing death and life. Then Surah says, in verse, from verse 4 to 10, the disbelievers say, this Quran is nothing but a lie. And Muhammad وسلم, has invented it. They say, they, these are the tales of the ancients and they are dictated to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They say, why this messenger eat food and walk about in the markets? Why is not an angel sent down to him? And why he has not been granted any treasure or a garden whereof he may eat? Allah says, he subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessed. And if he wills, he will give you better. O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he will give you better than that. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala will assign you palaces and gardens in paradise. Then Allah says, the people who deny the hour, we have prepared a flaming fire for them. Allah will gather them and their false deities, the, the, their false deities, whoever they are, they can be idols, angels, saints, prophets, and their deities will say, Oh Allah, it was not for us to take any awliya beside you. And the wrongdoers will bite their hands and they will say, why did we not follow the path of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Why we made those friends who misled us? Why did we abandon the Quran? They will see their deeds as scattered floating particles of dust and their false gods whom they used to worship, they will leave them in regret. Then in verses 35 to 44, Allah sent many messengers. It says, that Allah sent Musa alayhi salam and his brother Harun alayhi salam to the people of Pharaoh. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the people of Nu and people of Ad and Thamud, people of Arras and people of Luth, they were all destroyed. Why? Because they denied their messengers. Allah says, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that you are not a wakil over them, the people who do not hear and the people who do not understand, they are like cattle and even worse than, worse than them. Verses from 
45 onward, Surah describes the evidences of the existence of Creator. It says, it is Allah who spreads the shade and made the sun its guide. He has put the night and the day in succession. He has placed in the heavens big star, a great lamp, sun and a moon. He sends down the wind, he sends the wind as heralds of glad tidings and then pure water from the sky. It is he who has created two seas, that is two kinds of water, palatable and sweet, and the other one is salty and bitter. He subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the heavens and the earth in six days and then he rose over the throne. He is the all knower of the sins of this, his slaves. So put your trust in Allah and glorify him. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanallahi lazim. Verse 56, the messenger brings glad tidings and warnings. It says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرًا وَنَزِيرًا We have sent you, O Muhammad wasallam, only as a bearer of glad tidings and a warner. And so, say to them, I do not ask you of any reward for this preaching. Verse 60, ayah of prostration. And when it is said to them, it says, the verse says, when it is said to them, prostrate yourselves to Ar-Rahman, they say, what is Ar-Rahman? And it increases them in their disbelief. Pagans of Arab, they were not familiar with Allah's beautiful name, Ar-Rahman, and they did not like calling Allah by his name, Ar-Rahman. This is a verse uh, of prostration, and we must perform sajda when you, we recite Arabic. 12 Attributes of Slaves of Ar-Rahman Verses 63 to 74 describes the characteristics of the slaves of Allah. The first one in the list is humility. They walk on earth with, with humility. Number two, when the foolish address them with bad words, they reply back gently. Number three, they perform night prayer, the hajjud. Number four, they make dua that Allah protect them from the fire of hell. Number five, they spend moderately. They are neither extravagant nor miserly. They invoke Allah alone. Number seven, they do not kill anyone unjust. They can, do not kill anyone unjustly. Number eight, they stay away from illegal and shameful sexual acts. Number nine. They repent to Allah. Number 10, they do not bear false witness. Number 11, they pass by evil talk and evil play with dignity. And number 12, they pay heed to the verses of Allah and make dua for righteous spouses and offspring. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to establish all those characteristics in ourselves. Amen. After describing the traits of Ibadur Rahman, Allah says, those are the ones who will be rewarded with the highest place in paradise because of their patience. Their greetings will be salamun and excellent indeed is their abode. Then in verse 77, it says, those who denied, they will get the torment and permanent punishment. Astaghfirullah. Let's talk about the virtues and benefits of Surah Al-Furqan. As we know, there are 10 rewards for each letter of the Quran we recite. It is also stated in Majmah al-Bayan that Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever recites Surah Al-Furqan will be resurrected on the Day of Judgment while he has faith in the Day of Judgment and the resurrection of the dead from their graves. He will enter paradise without being held accountable for his deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those. Ameen. Now we are moving on to our story section. There is no story mentioned in the surah, but when we study tafsir, we find stories in the explanation of certain verses. For example, verse number 28, it says, Ya attakhiz fulanan Oh, wow, woe to me. Would that I had never taken so and so as a Khalil, 
which means an intimate friend. So we find uh, in the explanation in the tafsir, there is a story mentioned that Ubi ibn Khalaf and Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayyid, they were friends, close friends. It was the habit of Uqba. Upon returning from a travel, he used to invite the nobles of his people to eat with him. Uqba also used to keep the company of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He returned one day from one of his travels, made some food and invited people and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to eat. When the food was placed before the invitees, the messenger of Allah said to him, I will not eat from until uh, you bear witness that there is no deity except Allah and that I am the messenger of Allah. Upon which Uqba said, I bear witness that there is no deity except Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. Upon which the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ate from his food. Ubay was absent on that occasion. But when he was informed of what happened, he said to Uqba, You have renounced the religion of your forefathers? Uqba said, I, I did not. I had a man in my house who refused to eat my food unless I bore witness to him. And I was ashamed to let him leave my house without him eating. So I bore witness to him and he ate my food. Ubi said to him, I will never be happy with you until you go to him and spit on his face. Uqba did just that. When he spat, his spit split into two and flew back on Uqba's face. This caused both of his cheeks to burn and the scars resulting from this burning remained visible until he died. Later on, Uqba was killed at the Battle of Badr and Prophet ﷺ killed Ubay in the Battle of Uhud. We should make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with righteous friends. Amen. Who is a Rahman? Verse 16 uh, is eye of prostration. I thought it will be beneficial to describe briefly the incident of Treaty of Hudaybiyah. At the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, the Prophet ﷺ told the scribe to write by the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman. But what happened? The idolaters and disbelievers, they objected to it. They said, who is Ar-Rahman? We do not know Ar-Rahman. We do not know Ar-Rahim. Write what you used to write, Bismillahumma, in your name, O Allah. So Allah revealed the verse, invoke Allah or invoke Ar-Rahman by whatever name you invoke him for to him belong the best names and this verse is in chapter 17 Surah Al-Isra verse number 110 Allah has infinite, infinite names and 99 of them are extra special and famous Subhanallah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to learn them and believe in them Amin. Will Allah change sins into good deeds? In verse 70, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Who repent and believe and do righteous deeds for those, Allah will change their sins into good deeds. In the tafsir of Ibn Kathir, we find a beautiful story regarding this verse. It is narrated that a very old man with sunken eyes came to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and said, Ya Rasulullah, a man betrayed others and did immoral deeds and there was no evil deed which he didn't do. If his sins were to be distributed among uh, the whole of mankind, they would all be doomed. Is there any repentance for him? The Messenger of Allah Wasallam replied, A aslamta? Have you become Muslim? He said, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah alone with no partner and that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his servant and messenger. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, Allah will forgive you for whatever you have done like that and will replace your evil deeds with good merits. The man said, O messenger of Allah, even my betrayals and immoral actions? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, Yes, even your betrayals and immoral action. The man then 
became very happy and he went away saying, La ilaha illah, la ilaha illallah, and Allah Akbar. Subhanallah. There is a hope for us in these verses. Action points. Surah begins with Baraka, the Barak. We must ask Allah for Baraka. Do you know what Baraka means? It means blessings. When there are there are small things in quantities, but with Baraka, they serve more. For example, if there is a glass of water, if it has Baraka, it will not just uh, feed or serve one person, it will serve 100 people. We should make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give Baraka in our time, our knowledge, our wealth, our children, in our provision, in everything what we have. So ask Allah for Baraka. Turn to Quran. Do not deny the day of judgment. Believe in prophethood. Remember, do not worship your desires because it is another type of shirk. Prostrate to Allah Azza wa Jal alone, without any partner, without any associate, and put your trust in Allah. Remember, Allah is a Rahman. Repent to him sincerely and he subhanahu wa ta'ala will change evil deeds into good deeds. Establish the traits of the slaves of Allah. We have already discussed them in our previous slide. Create humility in yourself. Pray night prayer, tahajjud. Make dua that Allah saves you from the fire of hell. Make dua that Allah blesses you with the righteous spouses and families. Amin. Duas. There are two beautiful duas mentioned in the surah in verse 65 and verse 74. Verse 65 says, Rabba nasrif anna azaba jahannama inna azabaha kana karama inna ha saat mustaqarram wa muqama. O our Lord, turn away from us the punishment of hell. Surely the punishment thereof is a lasting. Surely it is an evil abode, an evil place to stay. In verse 74, Allah says, us to ask, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to make this dua. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa zurriyatina qurrata a'yuni wajalna lil muttaqina imama. Translated as, O our Lord, bestow upon us from our spouses and offsprings, comfort of the eyes, and make us imam, an imam of the pious. Amen. Please memorize these beautiful duas and include them in your daily duas, inshallah. With this, we conclude our study of Surah al furqan Soon, inshallah, we will upload the summary and the study of our next Surah, Surah al shura Till then, you take care, keep smiling, بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن الحكيم اللهم آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته